Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So I just want to quickly show you how to do a simple path follow with Typeflow in 3ds Max. And then what I did to make it a little more interesting was I have the particles follow the path and then collide with this box. When they collide with it, they break and then they fall on the ground. So if you are already familiar with Typeflow, this was the original setup. So you can just pause the video and look at this. And if you are new to Typeflow, then we're going to set it up from scratch right now. All right, so first let's go under standard and just create our regular Typeflow object. Then go under helpers, Typeflow and create a tie icon and maybe put it up here. And then let's go under standard splines and create a helix like that and maybe give it three turns rotated 90 degrees so I would move it up here so that it's right there where the particles are gonna come out so then let's just go into tie flow and we're just going to create a birth and we want to emit particles from 0 to 50 two of them per frame and then let's create a position icon and pick the icon and then let's create a speed and let's set the to a long icon arrow and pick the icon again so we have this basic flow and then I want to create a shape. Let's make it a torus just for fun and go to display and display geometry. And we can go back to shape and turn the scale up to maybe 300. So we have a bunch of donuts flying around. And then I want these to be physics objects that interact with each other. So I'm going to add a physics shape. So now we just have a bunch of donuts falling straight to the ground. So let's add the path follow operator. So just drag that out. For the path follow we want to pick the helix. Basically now we need to connect these two together. So I'm going to do a send out. Put it under physics and send those particles out to the path follow. So now they're being told to follow the spline except as you can see it's not really working. They are flying all over the place and that's because the force attracting them to the spline is additive, so they basically get too fast too quickly. So we need to add a slow operator. So just select slow and drag that above the path follow. And you want to increase this velocity value to maybe 95. And now you can see that since the particles are not as fast, it's easier for them to adhere to the path, but it's still not perfect. So what you can do is go to path follow and set velocity to zero. And then I set the attraction velocity to 0 0.07 and follow velocity to 0.1. And you might have to play with these numbers a little bit. But now that I'm moving forward, you can see that our particles are following the path and we can go back on the display and set that to geometry so that we can see our donuts. So now as you can see the particles are kind of jittery so what you can do is reduce this attraction acceleration to maybe 50% or lower and now it's much smoother and they're just sort of nicely following the spline all the way. So let's just go under standard and make a regular box. All right, now that you have your box in place, we're going to add a physics collision and put it right on the path follow. And for that physics collision object, we're going to pick this box here. So now what's going to happen is the donuts are going to come to the box. They're going to hit it, but they're still trying to follow the path. So they're not really falling down. So what we're going to do is send this to another event where they're going to break. So I'm going to add a Voronoi fracture and I'm going to send this collision into the fracture. So now what's happening as soon as the donuts come in contact with the box, they are fractured into tiny pieces, which again, we can display as geometry. So you can see that they are breaking, except they're not interacting with the box anymore because they are now basically a different object. We have the donuts interacting with the box but we don't have the pieces of the donuts interacting with the box so we need to set that up again so i'm going to add another physics shape and add that under the voronoi fracture so now i'm basically telling typeflow i want you to turn the pieces into physics objects and the pieces can then interact with the box nothing really changes still because we need to add a physics collision to tell the pieces to interact with this box so now i'm going to pick this box and now if i scrub the timeline you can see that the donuts hit the box 
and as soon as they collide with the box they are fractured with this Voronoi fracture the pieces are turned into a physics shape and that physics shape then interacts with this physics collision with this box so what you end up with is a setup like this where they break and then they fall to the ground just like in that example that I showed you earlier and all of this is calculating and caching in real time so you can see how fast this is and a few of those donuts escape that's fine you can just make your wall a little larger so they don't have a room to do that so I'm just gonna play this back one more time and so basically this is our final effect and by default Typhlo adds a ground deflector so that basically the home grid here acts as the ground you can go under the main Typhlo settings under physics and here you can play with the value of the gravity and also with the ground collider so right now the height of the collider is set to zero uh, you can set that to maybe 0.1 meters and now it will basically update the simulation for everything and now as you can see it's slightly above the ground so a pretty simple tutorial just wanted to show you the the path follow and then maybe how to break things if you are confused by anything i already posted two other tutorials for Typhlo for beginners so you can check those out as always i would appreciate a thumbs up i would appreciate if you would subscribe i have 50 other tutorials here that you can check out Thanks again for watching and I'll talk to you later.